Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2023 horror film, Cobweb. The film is directed by Samuel Bodin and it stars Lizzie Kaplan, Anthony Starr and Woody Norman. Now the film focuses on a family. Uh, we get the mother and father, played by Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr, and their son, Peter, played by Woody Norman. Uh, now, Peter is a bit of a strange child. He's bullied at school, the usual kind of stories. Um, he's got a strange home life. His mum and dad are... Uh, obviously, there's something just not right there. Um, and he's, he, he keeps thinking he's hearing things in the walls, seeing things, keeps waking up screaming, having nightmares. Mum and dad are getting frustrated, and he's getting more and more... Um, heightened and anxious about things that are happening in the house. Um, what ha What is happening in the house? Well, you'll have to watch the film to find out for yourself. Right, what are my thoughts on Cobweb? Right, the trailer for this one was very, very interesting. I saw it several months ago when it came out. It looked pretty good, very interesting. Uh, and it was a film that I marked on my calendar in a sense of, yeah, this could be one of those really, really good horror films. Because, in my opinion, I think we've had a pretty excellent year this year for horror films. I think we've we, it's been pretty stellar for the most part. Um, now, where does Cobweb sit in this? Well, for me, Cobweb is a little bit of a illusionist in a sense of it kind of dazzles you with its magic in the first half of the film or first 65 percent of the film you know it kind of dangles a carrot to its audience member trying to make the film out to be um intriguing and interesting there's a real mystery here and then about 65 70 percent of the way into the film the big reveal if you want to call it that takes place and it just becomes from that point on a very generic horror film and the kind of horror film that you've seen before many many times um so it's it, it's an odd one this i think in a lot of ways this film felt very much like a james warren film um and i do think there are comparisons here to malignant now malignant a couple of years ago was the horror film that divided audiences that year some thought it was absolute trash, others thought it was excellent. I was in the excellent camp. I really, really enjoyed Malignant. I thought it was really original and creative, fun, and I could put aside a lot of the plot holes in that film because it entertained me massively. Um, and I do think you can do that with a lot of films. You can kind of forgive huge plot holes and issues with films if, if you can come away from a film feeling hugely entertained. Um, this one, I will say that it is certainly entertaining up to a point but whereas the reveal and twist in malignant i really warmed to the reveal and twist in this one um i didn't warm to so much it just felt lazy almost you, do you know what i mean it was almost like when you're watching a film and you kind of were trying to work out in your head what what things it could be that's going to happen in the film and the first thing it comes into your mind, you're kind of thinking, no, it won't be that, it's too obvious. And that, that's what this film was. No, it can't be that, it's too obvious. Uh, and it is that. And you, and you almost feel cheated. Uh, because you get some pretty good tension building here. Um, the film does a pretty good job in, in regard to that. And the setup, and it spends a lot of time, you know with this family and these parents who behave who are behaving really strangely and very very sinister in a very sinister way and you're just thinking well so much really off here it's good this 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 reveal is going to be gangbusters and at the end of the film it's one of those films that you when it's finished you kind of it leaves you with far more questions than answers and it actually it, it, the questions it leaves you with kind of get you a bit cross or a bit frustrated when you think about them because you're kind of thinking hang on a minute why were they behaving like this there was no need for it and why did they do this why didn't they do this instead none of this would have happened and how did it even happen in the first place in this day and age you just can't and I obviously i can't go into too much detail because it would spoil the film and i don't want to do that clearly but i i came away just thought of thinking well, the, uh, 
like I say, it, it almost felt like they were dangling the carrot at the audiences and leading me down a certain path to think certain things were going to happen. And in actual fact, what actually does happen is um, they try and do the old switcheroo in a sense of give you a clever twist and a fun twist, but it just kind of made a mockery in my mind of what came before. So I don't want to get too negative here because I do think this is an entertaining film. I think it's a very competent horror film. There are moments in this film where I was definitely entertained. There was, there's more than enough um, scary moments in the film. There's, there's, a, there's a few jump scares here and there. The lighting is how you'd want it to be in a horror film. You could argue at times it's a little bit too dark. Again, it, it leads heavily into the horror tropes in a sense of... Nobody seems to put a light on in these houses. And the other tropes, you know, other characters get introduced late into the film that you just kind of like, well, they're going to get munched or they're going to get, you know, they're cannon fodder, they're, they're lambs to the slaughter sort of thing. Um, and I, I just found the last, you know, 30, 35% of the film to be ultimately quite disappointing because I, I was really looking forward to... Um, a conclusion to a film that had spent a lot of time setting itself up and I think almost as well you know it, it as I've said it's almost like it's the great deceiver this film it's I think it's it's a Lionsgate film but it's trying to be an A24 film at times you know it's, I think it's trying to be something it isn't um, you know the A24 films are a very sp certain specific type of you know like horror film um, the like the upper class horror films if you like well this is very much you know a middle class horror film this um that's maybe trying to outdo itself or outstretch itself beyond its capabilities and limits um but, but it, it it's certainly very watchable this i would probably still add this to my collection i do think there's a there is a decent horror film underneath all this i just think it's a little bit more generic than it's trying to make out that it is um, but you know um, it is certainly I think worth checking out I think it's definitely well, I could see from some of the reviews that I'm seeing and some of the scores that I'm seeing and things like that I think a lot of people are kind of thinking very similar uh, to me in a sense of it's it's nothing overly special this film um, it is I mean for me the standard I mean the kid that plays Peter is very very good i have to say um it's always a, a, a worry when you put a child actor especially right at the center of your film but the standouts here are both lizzie kaplan and anthony Starr. now anthony Starr is in um the amazon film the amazon uh, show the boys um so he's used to playing like a sinister character but him and lizzie kaplan but playing these really off kilter weird and sinister parents both do a very very good job um it's just, you know, it doesn't necessarily pay off in the way you want it to, their performances. So I certainly think this is perfectly watchable. It's just not the gangbusters horror film I was hoping it was going to be. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed checking out this review. I will be back, of course, with plenty more reviews and content on the channel very soon.